So now that we already have an understanding of what smart materials are, smart masks are going to be really easy to comprehend. So basically we're going to add a couple materials to this. I'm just going to use the same one, a couple different car paints where I'm actually going to just change one of the color ones to make it a little bit darker just so we can see a little bit of a color difference as we're mixing them in. So now let's say I wanted to mix in this top paint with the bottom one and had it be a little bit like it was drippy and like it's been aged and weathered and all that stuff. Now I can certainly go through and add a black mask and drop in a bunch of different layers and generators and uh, different things like that. But we already have a bunch here in our smart masks. So you can see as you're going down, we've got a bunch of different use cases for them. And if I hover over them, you'll see the preview sphere pop up a little bit bigger and you can just see where the white elements are is where the effect is going to be and black is not going to be. So if I wanted like a drip on here, I could just search for drip. There's these rust strips. I can go and drag and drop it. Now you'll see that I cannot drop it right on the object. That's because I have to tell it specifically which layer I would like to apply this to. And if you go over here, you can see as I let go, it'll create a black mask and automatically put in a layer in there. Now the layer is going to depend on uh, whatever it is. In this case, it's just a single one. And I can uh, operate and change this and, and use all my slider controls from there. Um, if I wanted to, or I should say this, different um, different smart masks are gonna have different, um, you know, some of them will just have one, two, three, four. So if I do like this dry leak, you'll see now that there are two in here. There's a, a legacy mask builder and I can kind of see what they're doing individually. So this mask builder is really kind of getting in around the edges and I can either, you know, increase and decrease that individually. And now I can go into my grunge mask, which I'll increase the balance to make it more prominent. It's kind of a weird thing going on here. It actually looks like it's triplanar and that's because it is triplanar. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch that around and then just have it rotated so it'll, it'll drip downward. And now I can have just like total control over this. So you can increase the, the balance, the contrast. It's just a really neat way of getting some more uh, variation here. I'm gonna increase that tiling because it's a little smaller. Yeah, see now I've got some lovely like little uh, drips of paint on top of my other paint. It's kind of pulling up in areas that it would make sense. And all this was again, simply dragging and dropping and sliding some parameter controls. Now in much the same way, if I am building out, you know, my stack like this, and I want to create a smart mask, all I have to do is hover over the mask itself, right click on it and say, uh, create smart mask right here. So that's, that's pretty much it. And again, it's the exact same functionality as a smart material. It goes in that folder, gets read in every time you open Substance Painter. You can send it to you, your friends, your clients, your coworkers, whatever. And, uh, and you can go from there. So it's just a, uh, a really nice tool for speeding up your workflow.